Suffolk is a county of big skies, unspoilt countryside, ancient villages and beautiful beaches. If it's a gentler lifestyle you crave, then Suffolk delivers. It's also on a mission to become the UK's greenest county, planting trees and hedgerows and increasing the use of solar panels in a bold bid to try and help offset the UK's carbon footprint. Both positive and proactive initiatives that really do stand to serve all Suffolk's residents long into the future. Suffolk sits in the east of England. Historic? Incredibly. Lavenham, one of England's most perfectly preserved medieval villages, is home to more than 200 listed buildings. Sleepy? Yes, very in parts. And of course, for many, that is the draw. We've moved to Suffolk about 18 months ago or so, and it's honestly been just a life-changing experience for us. The actual quality of life has really just improved, and I'd recommend it to anybody. The county's market towns provide more in the way of events and entertainment. Hadley's High Street has an eclectic mix of independent cafes, shops and restaurants, and Woodbridge attracts some of Suffolk's finest food and drink producers. Suffolk is a gorgeous place to live. There's so many amazing shops, restaurants, bars. I've lived and worked here nearly all my life and studied here. Um, it's probably the biggest reason why I've just bought my first house, not far from this park. Um, yeah, it's a brilliant place to live. Now, I've been lucky enough to help many buyers on Escape to the Country over many, many years. And the key drivers for most are the need for space, for peace, for quiet, and to be closer to family. Well, today's buyer has just had a new grandson, so no prizes for guessing why she wants to move. My grandson was born in the first lockdown, and we missed out on quite a lot during that first year. He's a year old now, and we feel now's the right time to move so that we can be a part of his life and see him grow up. So Nikki and her husband Kevin are relocating from their current home in the busy Gloucestershire town of Tewkesbury, some 200 miles east to the opposite side of the country. They'll be closer to their son and, most importantly, grandson, but further away from daughter Emma. I am a little bit worried about uh, mom and dad moving quite so far away. I have, for most of my life, been a little bit of a home bird. It's going to be a little bit scary, the fact that they are going to be like four hours away uh, from where I've moved to, um, so they best have a room. Well, Emma can make sure there's a room for her, since she'll be supporting her mum on this upcoming Suffolk house hunt. We don't know Suffolk that well. Our son's lived Ipswich for about ten years now, but when we visited, we've been around some lovely small market towns and villages. And we just like the countryside. There's no doubt that this move is a big change for everyone. I am a bit apprehensive of her not being there. I'm used to her being around. She's my best friend as well as my daughter. Um, <laughs> could be strange without her. She's a quiet. <laughs> Nikki and husband Kevin are after a character property. They'll consider a semi, but would prefer a detached house and are happy to do work to a property. They want two to three bedrooms, a large garden, ideally a quarter of an acre, and to be within walking distance of a village. They've got a £450,000 budget and are hopeful that that will be enough to make their life-changing move to the Suffolk countryside. There is something magical about driving through Suffolk, particularly if you know it the way I do. Everywhere you look, there is something wonderful to look at. Look at that lovely old manor house there in Grange. Thatch properties are plenty. You are driving through history when you drive through the lanes of Suffolk. You are never, ever going to have to want for something to look at. And if you're not looking at property, you're looking at gorgeous countryside. And when I say gorgeous, I mean gorgeous. So I'm off to meet our ladies to get our country journey underway here in the region where I was born and raised.
Well, what a move this is. It's all about your grandson, isn't it? It certainly is, yes. So what's it like being an auntie? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was waiting for the day. Now, you're here to act as a sort of voice of reason yes. in this process. Because poor old dad, he's still at work, isn't he? So yes. he can't join us today. <laughs> yeah. um, so whatever decisions are made this week, you two have got to justify to him. Yep. He's pretty easygoing, isn't he? Yeah, so... he's very laid back. What was the sort of brief that he gave you? Open fire is a must. <laughs> I think that's his main thing, and a workshop if possible. Is, is he quite hands on? Oh, yes. Is he? Very. Very. That's his hobby. <laughs> yeah, DIY that, is his hobby. Yeah, that is his one hobby. Are you optimistic? We're going to find you something that's going to work? Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm looking forward to what we're going to be shown. Well, let's see what we've got you, shall we? Come on then. Day one of our Suffolk adventure, and our first stop is the village of Walsham the Willows. It's a 40-minute drive from Nicky and Kevin's grandson in Ipswich and has a primary school, a mobile post office, two pubs, a very popular tea room and a butcher's and general store. All of this is just a five-minute walk away from the first property we've lined up. If it's character Nicky and Kevin want, it's character they'll get. This Grade 2 listed cottage is thought to date back to 1450 and we're starting this viewing in the back garden. Right then, what do you think of this? Well, it's looking good so far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty. So far, definitely so good. It is beautiful. It looks like it's got heaps of character. Yeah. Loving the uh, the three chimneys. That's uh, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, wood burner tick. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's not straight which I love. I can assure you there isn't a straight line in this. Awesome. <laughs> uh, at all. So I think without further ado, we should go and have a look. We're going to go in through what is the back door. It's the country. We all use the back door. <laughs> Come and have a look. Funnily enough, the owners of this house are also moving to the other side of the country to be closer to their grown-up children. In the 20 years they've lived here, they've completely renovated the whole place, including the kitchen breakfast room. Well, we talked about character. What do we think? This is certainly character. Yes. It's lovely. Big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Nice size. It's also got a pantry through that door there. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. Do you wish you were buying it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you might say that. Good. Right. Follow me. Let's continue our little tour through into here and this room for me I think is the real highlight uh, of this property. Proper country, cottage, cosy. Yeah. Really cosy. Nice. Yes. And I think when most people picture in Inglenook that is it. Yeah. yeah uh, definitely. Next door there's another reception room. The owners call it the sunshine room because it's cheery even on dull days. It has a staircase which leads to two upstairs bedrooms. And also off this room is a ground floor family bathroom. But we're going to check out the main bedroom, which is accessed via its own staircase from the kitchen. So this is it. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> this is the staircase, come on. Now they're quite steep, but that's the joy of old houses. Yes. Uh, but come up here, because as a master in a property of this size, I think this is pretty generous, actually. No, that's a nice size. And we've got this lovely element here, these steps that go up. Put your head around the corner. This doorway that leads through to one of the other two bedrooms. Um, you'll be pleased to know that's not the main route in. <laughs> I'm sending Nikki and Emma off to look around on their own. Oh, this is cute. This is perfect. Yeah. It's actually larger than I thought it was yeah. going to be. I wonder if it'll fit a three-quarter bed to there rather than a single for <laughs> when I come to stay. <laughs> this could be my room. You'll be in the shed at the bottom of the garden. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Speaking of which, the house sits on a plot of about a quarter of an acre. The mature south-facing rear garden has a couple of workshop options for Kevin, a potting shed and an office that's accessed from the driveway. There's also a sizeable front garden. OK, well, we started in the back garden, so we're going to finish in the front garden. As you can see, a very generous plot here, in addition to what you get uh, at the back of the property. Is this enough? 
Yes, I would say this was enough. Yeah. It's a lovely house, yeah. lovely garden. Well, let's see if you like the price. What do you think this is on the market for then? I'm going with 430. Yeah, okay. Emma. I think it's higher. I'd probably go 445, 450. Your instincts are right, Emma. That is the asking price. £450,000 for our beautiful yeah, it period surprise property. Me. Yeah, because the 450 was the the top if no work needed doing and it doesn't it only needs like our stamp or their stamp putting on it our stamp. can you see what happened there can you see what happened there i like it i, I can see what's going to happen here. yes yeah who's in charge oh i wonder um, great guys uh well look there's much to celebrate with this one go and spend a bit more time lap it up at your leisure okay off you go On the market for £450,000, this Grade 2 listed Tudor cottage is bursting with character. It has a kitchen breakfast room, two reception rooms and three bedrooms. There are generous gardens to the front and back and it's a hop, skip and a jump from the centre of the village. It's lovely. It's got a really nice, homely, warm feeling to it. It's got a beautiful garden but I love this fireplace. It's absolutely perfect. I think Dad would really like it here. Um, he loves the slower pace of life, perfect location. I think he'll love it. Happy girls? Definitely, yeah. yes. Have we sold it? Potentially. It's a, it's a <laughs> good first house. A good, yeah, you see, not <laughs> quite giving it all away yet. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's Ipswich, the county town of Suffolk. And a great place for Nikki and Emma to experience the vibrant town life that lies beyond the county's rural scenery. It's very well connected. By train, Norwich is about 40 minutes away. Cambridge, an hour and 20. To London, there are more than 60 direct daily trains with the quickest taking under an hour. Excellent road links. The A12, A14 and A140 mean you can drive or take the bus to all these major cities too. The town itself has a thriving art scene with an annual calendar featuring a range of performance, film, music and literary events. Of its many resplendent parks, it's arguably the Grade 2 listed Christchurch Park that's most popular with both locals and tourists. For shopping, wander amongst the Warren of Tudor Streets where big high street brands rub alongside an abundance of independent retailers like this family-run homeware store. Ipswich is an amazing place, it's very historical, um, lovely parks, we've got a lovely waterfront as well, amazing independent shops. Ipswich is jewel in the crown really. The next stop on our jaunt across Suffolk is the village of Ashfield cum Thorpe. It's a little closer to Nicky and Kevin's grandson since Ipswich is about a half hour drive away. This quiet village is home to just over 200 people. There's a community centre. The mobile library stops here every other Thursday and daily bus services to Ipswich and the town of Framlingham, a journey of about 15 minutes. Next door to the community centre is the next property we've lined up to show Nikki and Emma. This semi-detached cottage dates back to the 1750s and has been on the market for just one day. What do you think, Nikki? It looks lovely. Yes, mm -hmm. It looks really nice. Yeah? I like the colour of the windows. It just looks very chocolate boxy. Now, it currently has two beds. However, it's just received planning permission for an extension which would occupy the space of that garage. Full height, which would give you the third bedroom and another reception room as well. Let's see what you think. Come and have a look. The present owners have fully updated this cottage, including all of the windows, which were replaced with double glazing in those handmade wooden frames that caught Nicky's eye. Come in through the newly added porch and little kind of boot room into here. What do you think, Nikki? I like it. Oh, this is cute. It yeah. is, isn't it? Oh, it's really nice. 
That's nice, isn't it? It's what I've always wanted, is a fire in between two rooms. Yeah. Have a look through here. Let's see where that fireplace goes. This is what you get, is your main living area. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. It's yeah, really cozy. Yeah. yeah, really cozy. Mm. Now imagine it with the extension, because presumably there would be a door again through here. Yeah. Somewhere that would get you through into that, and another mm. reception space mm. as well. But yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to picture you and Kevin now particularly. How would he respond to this? I think he would love this. Yeah. Good. I'm delighted. Next stop, kitchen. Let's have a look at that. So back through the dining room, into here. I like it. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because I love it. And I don't yeah, I really it. like it. Uh, and then behind you there, you've got this little office space as well. But then you've got a, uh, the main bathroom is here, downstairs, and then behind me, again, a bit of a utility room. It's lovely. Yes, it is. It's lovely. It's like a small farmhouse kitchen. Yes. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, I really like it. Um, it's got that really cute cottage feel. Because I've not been to your mum and dad's house no. in Tewkesbury. How much stuff have they got? Would it, would, it, would, it, <laughs> would, it, would, it, would it get in here? No. no. Not a chance. They would have to massively get rid of stuff. <laughs> But, you know, that's all part of the process, isn't it? Yep, declutter. Yes. Can you declutter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't twisting your arm there. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. like this, definitely. Well, decluttering may be less of an issue upstairs, for whilst there are just two bedrooms, both are good sizes. I'm leaving Emma and Nikki to explore those on their own. This is cute. Yeah, nice little room. I think it might even fit a double bed. Mm. Looks like some good uh, storage back there. It's nice. This is a nice size room. Yeah, it is, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it'd be plenty big enough. Yeah, good master bedroom. And if you end up extending above, well, where the garage is, you might even be able to like, chop off a little bit to make a corridor so you don't actually have to walk, walk through, through the guest bedroom. Yeah. This is a conversation that bodes well. Outside, there's a lovely back garden which gets the sun all afternoon and from where Nikki and Kevin could experience beautiful Suffolk sunsets. I gather chickens are on your wish list, Nikki. They are, yes. Yes, I wouldn't mind chickens. But in terms of outdoor space, Emma, what do you reckon to this? I think it's absolutely perfect. Not quite as private as house number one, but it still feels really rural with the paddocks out the back. Um, yeah, it's a, a nice size. So let's have a think about uh, the price on this one then. Go on, Emma, you go first this time. Um, I'm going to go with £400,000. OK, yeah. I go for £425,000. Very interesting. It is on the market for £375,000. Really? Wow. Leaving you a cool £75,000 left over to, if you wished, put oh. that extension on. Mm. It's food for thought. Yes. Yes. Mm. Like it even more now? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely worth bearing in mind. On the market for £375,000, this semi-detached property has a dining room, a cosy lounge, a farmhouse kitchen and two bedrooms. It comes with planning permission to add a third bedroom and another reception room and sits on a good-sized plot with lovely rural views. Very attractive looking house, very attractive. I love it inside, it's really, it's been done so well. It gives you that homely, cosy, warm feeling. Doing a renovation project and building extension, we've done it before, it's not a problem. With 75,000 left, we could build a beautiful extension with some left over. So, yes, yeah, definitely promising. Mm, definitely some potential there. We're lucky enough to be exploring Suffolk at the height of the bluebell season. These wild flowers, which bloom from mid-April to late May, are a sure sign that spring has sprung. 
And as a novice but enthusiastic botanist, I think there are few greater sights to behold than the violet glow of a woodland bluebell carpet. This little wood here is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? It's yes. lovely. Over half the world's population of bluebells are to be found in the UK's woodlands, which are comprised of both native and Spanish bluebells. The Victorians had a passion for collecting plants from all over the world, and they, it is said, introduced the Spanish bluebell. And it has now kind of taken over a lot of our bluebell woods. Now, the Spanish version, it's got its flowers on either side of the stem, and it has these much broader leaves, much chunkier right. looking plant. And they don't really droop as much okay. as yeah. the native variety. But trying to spot the native ones is, I have found quite yeah. difficult. <laughs> what we're looking for is something which has got a more elongated bell, if you will, and with much thinner leaves at the base. That is your mission, right. should you choose right. to accept it. <laughs> OK. Sometimes known as cuckoo's boots or witch's thimbles, bluebells are protected by law and shouldn't be picked. Are the, are the bells all on one side of the stem? I think so. Yes, they look it, don't they? Yeah. There you go. May I introduce you to a native bluebell? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> the pollen's cream inside. That's a good sign as well. Cool. That... Yeah, for the native, absolutely. Ah, yeah. awesome. Right. Steeped in folklore, bluebells have, for centuries, been a symbol of humility, gratitude and everlasting love. And that, I think, is a rather lovely sentiment on which to end our day. If Suffolk's spectacular coast and countryside is calling to you, here's what you need to know about the county's property market. House prices in Suffolk have risen by almost 10% in the past year, and today the average price of a detached house is just over £402,000. Of course, prices vary greatly within the county, and to find out more, I'm meeting a local estate agent at a traditional Suffolk barn that's been converted into a stunning family home. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. You know, when I picture Suffolk property, this is the sort of thing I always have in mind. And a real treat to be able to catch up with you in a building like this as we talk about the wider issues surrounding Suffolk property. Where do you think the real hotspots are? The real gems are in Oldborough, um, that's a very popular location, that's a coastal location. You've got Felixstowe um, is quite an up and coming hotspot. Ipswich and surrounding areas are uh, very popular and we're seeing property as soon as it's up for sale going straight away and they're achieving asking price and slightly over some of them. So in terms of Affordability, where would you recommend people to go? The bargains are in more remote locations uh, on the outskirts of Suffolk. So you're looking at lower staffed villages around there. Our country seeker Nikki, with daughter in tow, has set aside £450,000 for this move to Suffolk. But either side of that figure, there are some lovely homes waiting to be snapped up. In the village of Elmset, this two-bed cottage, painted Suffolk pink of course, has a guide price of £290,000 and a garden with a raised deck that's ideal for admiring the countryside views. If the Suffolk coast is where you want to be, this 150-year-old Dutch sailing barge might float your boat. With a cosy lounge, a kitchen and three bedrooms, it's moored on the River Deben, close to the pretty town of Woodbridge. The owner is looking for offers over £180,000. But if land and sea aren't your thing, how about the air? OK, it doesn't actually fly anymore, but this ex-military Lynx helicopter near Southwold offers unique accommodation if you want a short break in the county. Prices start from £75 a night for two people. If you needed any more convincing that Suffolk living is for you, then meet Hans Engstrom. Five years ago, he escaped here with his family, looking for a new adventure. I live here in sunny Suffolk, together with my wife, Christine, two of our five children, uh, grandchildren, 
and a bunch of various animals. Originally from Sweden, Hans, a property developer, not only found a new home here, he and his children started a brand new business and established a vineyard on the site of this former chicken farm. With 34 acres to play with, they planted up 19,000 vines and have plans to plant a further 6,000. We're now into the third year of the vineyard and this year will be the first that we will have any uh, harvest. Mount Farm Vineyard is now on target to start bottling its first red later this year. But the most transformative part of this move? We've been able to see the, the children and grandchildren, which is more than, uh, than you can ask for. And that, of course, is the driving factor behind Nikki's relocation to Suffolk. Now, for many people making the move to the countryside, it's all about changing their lifestyle, but also changing their location. What do they find when they walk out the front door? Well, our mystery house does just that with a stunning location and a unique opportunity to purchase a property, which I think will certainly ring the changes from where they are now to where they could be in the future. And the mystery begins early. So we've just arrived at Felixstowe Ferry. Um, not entirely sure what they've got planned for us. Um, what, uh, what's going through your mind? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> well, the hamlet of Felixstowe Ferry is the starting point for today's mystery tour. Well, good morning, Emma. Good morning, Nikki. How are we? Good morning. Well, fine, thank you. If you look across the water, that is where our mystery house is. Ooh. Oh, interesting. In, yeah, yeah, very interesting. Now, to get to it, we could take a 45-minute drive, or there's another way. We swim. <laughs> no, I am joking. There's a ferry, and it links Felixstowe Ferry here on the southern shore of the Deben estuary with the tranquil village of Bordsey on the north shore. Now, the way you summon it is with this very high-tech device. <laughs> it simply says, wave back for ferry. So there we are. Let's try and get his attention. <laughs> Fantastic. A ferry service has run between the two villages for nearly 900 years. Today, daily services operate from May through to September. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, good morning. What's nice up? to see you. Yeah, it's day for it. Oh, it is. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. This historic foot ferry is actually one of four that enable walkers and cyclists to cross the four main estuaries and rivers that dissect the Suffolk coast. So what do you think Kevin would make of this then? Oh, he'd be quite happy with this. <laughs> yeah? And what about the prospect of owning a boat then? I would love to. Would you? Yes. My father had a boat when we were in the 70s. Um, that was good fun. Well, this sounds very encouraging. Now, be warned, you don't get long to revel in the splendour of the Deben because the crossing takes less than five minutes. Thank you very much, Angwan. So here we are, our final stop, the village of Bordsey, a 35-minute drive from Nicky and Kevin's family in Ipswich. Bordsey's 270 plus residents ensure a lively village life with an annual programme of events that include a summer fete and the New Year Deben Dip, a mobile library visits monthly and a grocer's van weekly. And sitting on Bordsey Quay just metres from a sandy beach is the property in question. Now I've left Nikki and Emma to have a coffee and soak up a little of the local atmosphere and ask them to meet me here when they're ready. So this is our mystery house. Now, this is Mid Terrace. And as you can tell, by far the youngest property of the week. The period of build we're talking about means that everything in here is straight, which means it's very easy to knock it about and change it if you want to turn it into something more fitting for the 21st century. Well, are we feeling refreshed after our coffee? Yes, definitely. Right then, have a look at this, our mystery house. I say mystery house, mystery mid-terrace. Okay, what we've got for you here is a lovely turn of the century old estate cottage. What do you think, Vicky? 
I think it looks nice so far, to be honest. Yeah? Yes. I love it, I must admit. Um, yeah, the location, how quiet it is, uh, absolutely fabulous. Good. Well, let's get you in and have a look. On the way, you tell me, are these Spanish bluebells or native bluebells? Ooh, I'd say native. I'm going Spanish. I'm going Spanish. <laughs> They're so straight. We'll leave it a mystery. Come on. <laughs> let's have a look. These quayside cottages were built back in 1905 for workers at nearby Bordsey Manor. Right, so Emma, if you can shut the door. Come in, Nikki. Ooh, that's a nice slob there, there. Like it. Good so far? Yeah? Yeah. What's your dad going to think? I think he'll like it. Yeah? yeah. Yes, I do. It's, yeah. it's not too oldy-woldy that it would affect the character by doing stuff to it. Yeah, that's a good basically. point. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it's good. OK, come and have a look at the kitchen. Not massive, to be fair. But will it work, Nikki, for you? Yes, I think it's workable. Well, I think potentially you could extend this with the right permissions. Mm. Um, so the key thing, I suppose, is whether or not this is something you would see yourselves pouring your imagination into. Oh, I think I could easily, yes. Um, the main bathroom with bath and shower is through here as well. Right. So far, what I've seen is good. Well, I hope that continues as they wander around the rest of the property on their own. On the other side of the entrance hall is the living room. Yeah, cosy. Yeah, it's about the same mm. size as the uh, the dining room. Yes, it's very different from the other two properties we've seen, but yeah. I like it. It's still got character. And yeah, no, it does. It's quirky. It's, yeah, it's not I like as it. encroaching as the other two. Like the other mm. two were, like the ceilings were a lot lower and stuff. But yeah, um, this is this but is but a it's not it would, it would work. Upstairs, there's a twin room with a fireplace and wonderful views over the Deben, and on the opposite side of the landing, a double bedroom. This is a lovely size room. Yeah. I like this a lot. I love like, the fireplace. Yeah, that's really nice. The views are spectacular. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Well, hopefully, Nikki and Emma are pleased by what they're finding upstairs, but there's definitely a lot of scope out here with this property. It's clear to me that with the right vision, investment and of course permissions you could potentially extend this improve the kitchen space and frankly you're not going to lose anything from the garden because well, it's enormous this 135 foot east facing rear garden with a summer house and barbecue area is another part of this property that nikki and kevin could really make their own but of course that all depends on the price what do you think your dad would make of this one then Oh, I think he'd love it. Yeah, stick a workshop along that fence. He'd have a field day out here. So let's get down to the final element, which is the price. I think it's top of budget. OK. 450000 OK. Yeah, I must admit, it wouldn't surprise me if it was actually over budget. OK. Um, I'm going to go £475,000. Well, let's make it easy for you. You're both wrong in a good way. This is currently on the market for 420 thousand pounds wow oh, well. <laughs> so comfortably under budget and it could be yours this characterful edwardian mid-terrace cottage has two reception rooms two bedrooms and a very generous rear garden perched on the shores of the river deben just meters from a sandy beach its location is quite unique and it's on the market for four hundred and twenty thousand pounds i don't think i'd have ever looked at a mid-terrace property I wouldn't have even considered it but I think I could be happy here mm. I would be ecstatic to come and stay here um, oh the location she won't want to go home <laughs> no, <laughs> no probably not yeah it's a nice feel to it yeah you think this is the one yeah yeah I've got a really good feeling <laughs> exciting <laughs> Well, after some very careful consideration, I am now pretty sure that these are Spanish bluebells. But over there is a native. Hey, we got it all. Fantastic. Uh, that is it, I'm afraid, for our house tours. Now you've got to make sense of it all. Good luck. Come on. Suffolk's agricultural legacy has played a huge part in the county's identity for centuries. But on the outskirts of Lower Stoft, there's a rather unique farm that seeks to improve the well-being of vulnerable people through farming. Pathways Care Farm was founded by Jeff Stevens, 
and I've come to meet him. Jeff! Hello. Lovely to see you. And you. So tell us a bit more about the idea of a care farm, because for some people it will be a completely new concept. A care farm is a farm, but it's daycare. So people come here with various difficulties in their life, whether that's dementia or a learning difficulty of some kind, and we give them a good day. They do meaningful work and we have a good time. We enjoy the open air. And that's what it's about. It's about well-being. Now, of course, mental health has been highlighted through the recent crisis, but even before then, I think we were becoming more aware of its importance to us all. And I was surprised to learn that there are some 300 care farms now right across the country. It's obviously growing and it works. It does work. It's vital because no one else does what we're doing. If you have dementia, the chances are you'll go to a day centre. But the idea of care farming is we concentrate on what people can do and don't worry about what they can't do. And, and that is, it's such a joy being around these people. It really is. I'm really keen to come and meet some of your farm workers and some of the animals and get a real sense of how it all works. Yeah, let me go and show you. The Care Farm provides one-to-one -one support for people with a wide range of mental health issues, learning difficulties and those on rehabilitation programmes. First up, I'm meeting Sally. So is this part of your daily routine then, Sally, yes, to look after um, the alpacas? Yeah, yes, the animals can, they're great therapy, you know. I find it easy to connect with animals than humans, actually, so... <laughs> Are you noticing the benefits of being here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, I have autism and it's good to be able to, like, um, come out and do my normal routine in my week, which is good. Um, yeah, and being in the open space and being with friends and animals, you know, yeah, it's great. So what are your favourite bits of the farm, do you think? Um, I like being busy and helpful, really. And it's that sense of purpose and feeling valued that is echoed by Fran, a fellow farm worker. I've had mental health issues for a long time now and I've never had anywhere that addresses them like the farm does. They've got, they've got a different approach and that approach to mental health and helping on mental health works. And they're all helping each other out. We're all, everyone's valued. Yeah. Equally. And that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It's that sense of value and purpose that comes from yeah. it. Yeah, and, and belonging. It's the social aspect of it. Yeah. It's just nice being able to be with people and help other people, but then also let yourself be helped. And do you find it easier to accept help here, Fran, because you're able to give something back to it? Yeah, I can accept the help because I'm helping other people as well. Sort we of all help exchange. each other, sort of. Yeah, exactly. In this hugely positive environment, everything is seen as an opportunity. So how long have you been coming here for? Um, it's around three years now. And I'm getting a real sense of, of the community and the family that exists amongst you all. Oh, yes, definitely. Following surgery to remove a brain tumour, Paul, who used to work in the building trade, developed severe epilepsy. I did have a very good life before I... I found out I had this brain tumour. But here, you've got a wonderful outlet for your passion for, for hard work, for building, yes. and obviously for the farm. Yes, I do as much as I can. Um, yeah, and I, I absolutely love it. Meeting Jeff and speaking with Paul, Fran and Sally has been inspiring. Jeff told me earlier that the work of the care farm confirms what we already knew. Time spent with others in nature where you can learn and grow will only do you good. And having spent time at Pathways today, I wholeheartedly agree. Well, I'm very happy that this week we have left both Nikki and Emma spoilt for choice. And of course, waiting in the wings at the other side of the country is husband Kevin, keen to find out if at the end of the day, we have found them a solution to their property shopping dreams for the future. Well, there's only one person that really knows the answer, and that, of course, is Nikki. Let's go and ask her. The final destination on our tour of Suffolk is a popular picnic spot on the banks of the River Orwell at Nacton. What an interesting week we've had. Three, I think, really viable options. Uh, all three properties have been amazing. They've all had plus points, but... Contrary to what I would have expected, 
the mystery house, I've fallen for big time. I was adamant I, I wanted a detached property. Yep. But location, the garden, there's a lot of potential there. I think we could make it into a beautiful home. Wow. Have you spoken to your husband yet? Yes. I think I said that it was spectacular um, and I sent him a, a few photos over. From our reaction, I think he's quite eager to, to come and have a look. Wow. <laughs> How exciting. There is definitely something about that location mm. which is yeah. entirely yeah. unique. And I think of all the properties, it's probably the one that offers you the most definite change of lifestyle because of where yes. it is. Coastal yeah. living is life all its own. Mm. It really is quite special. I can perfectly understand that Basically, Emma has twisted your arm because she wants somewhere cool to come and hang out uh, <laughs> when she's not in Gloucestershire. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, guys, I am delighted. Um, what I will tell you is that rural property is uh, selling like crazy at the moment, so you will have to get your skates on, I suspect. Let us know how you get on, and if you do it, who knows, we may be back sooner than you think to see how you're getting on. We'll get the kettle on. Yeah, please do. <laughs> You know, having been lucky enough to grow up here, the culture, the landscape and the views of Suffolk that we've all enjoyed this week have, for me, been a constant companion throughout my life. And now, hopefully, for Kevin and for Nikki, their journey of discovery, making this place their own, is just about to begin. But we haven't simply found them a new home. We have, perhaps more importantly, ensured that they will be closer to that most important of things, to family, and to watch their grandson grow up as a Suffolk boy. I'll see you next time. Nikki eagerly returned to the county with husband Kevin to view both the mystery house in Bordsey and the detached property in Walsham the Willows. But both sold before they were in a position to make an offer. However, they are now more determined than ever to make their country move and we all hope it won't be too long before they're enjoying a new life in beautiful Suffolk. If you would also like to escape to the country in England, Wales, Scotland or Northern Ireland and need our help, why not get in touch at bbc.co.uk forward slash take part.